Greetings, my name is Clarastroclus, and in this video I'm going to talk about some relatively easy to implement changes that From Software can make to Armored Core 6 Fires of Rubicon to support competitive play. The first, and probably the hardest of these changes, would be to implement ranked matchmaking. I have some anecdotal evidence that there's some demand for this, as I've had a few friends tell me that they'd be more interested in playing if there were ranked matchmaking. However, the amount of backend work needed to implement this isn't trivial. They have similar systems with games like Verdict Day and Elden Ring, the latter of which was delayed and released after launch. So there's hope, but this is going to be the most difficult thing to implement on the list. That said, I think it's the change that would drive the most interest to the game as well. The next change is a pretty obvious one, but I'm really hoping From Software is putting aside the resources to fix the spectate system. It's not unusably bad, but it's pretty bad, and tournaments would be a lot better to watch if you could, you know, see the bullets. The only reason I think this change might be easy to implement is because we don't really have this problem actually playing PvP. This the problem appears to be isolated to spectate, so I hope that it's just a simple fix and we can get a more functional spectate system soon. The rest of the changes I would like to see are all really just custom room options. Let's start with the easiest one. At present, the most useful option you could add to custom rooms would be the ability to hide your ACs in the lobby. This option would completely cater to competitive play, where currently one of the best strategies is to join a lobby, look at your opponent's AC, and then pick the counter to it. The ability to stop other players from doing this at a lobby level would be really useful and would really help legitimize playing Armored Core at a competitive level. Fair warning, the next couple of suggestions are a little bit spoilery, so if you care about that kind of thing and you haven't beaten the game yet, you should probably stop watching now. The next option I would like to see is just more music selection. I've been playing the game for about 400 hours at this point, and hearing the same rotation of three or four songs over and over is just starting to get a little bit old. There's a lot of really fantastic music in this game, and I would love if they leveraged more of it for multiplayer, especially now that they've given players the time to play through the game. This leads pretty cleanly into my last suggestion, which is probably the one I want more than anything, and that's more multiplayer maps. There are a lot of environments that they built for this game that are really fantastic that we never even get to see in multiplayer, and they're already built, so what's the deal with that? Can you imagine how much more fun it would be to get absolutely slaughtered by Zimmermans while running around in the basement of the Xylem? I'd like to go through some of these, just so you can get an idea of just how cool these environments are, and just how many of them there are. Keep in mind, all the art assets for these maps are already complete, and that's a considerable amount of work as far as game development goes, so hopefully From Software doesn't have any secret good reasons for keeping these maps out of multiplayer, and they're just waiting on more players to beat the game. So even just in the tutorial level for the game, I can find you three different maps that would all be fantastic additions to competitive play. The first one is Grid 135, which has these two rails on either side and this really cool underground area that you can jump down and explore. This isn't a feature that other maps have, and I think it would lead to some really interesting moments during competitive matches. Plus, the gaps between these two rails on either side lead to more players falling out of bounds, which is honestly the funniest thing that could possibly happen in PvP. The next area I think would be really cool to fight in is this mountainous area just after you take the catapult. This is really the most natural looking area on Rubicon that we get to see, and I think it could lead to some really interesting fights on these cliffs, and some really cinematic moments. I'm not sure how competitive this map would be, as it probably gives a huge advantage to missile users, but there's plenty of those in the game already, so I don't think another one's going to do any harm. Plus it really is just absolutely gorgeous. The next map I'd like to see is the contaminated city itself. It has these claustrophobic areas under the highways that really give a dimension to combat that I think we're missing in a lot of the multiplayer maps that exist in the game right now. Plus, it probably has one of the best senses of scale of any map in Armored Core 6. I mean, just look at how huge my AC looks. It really gives you that giant robot stomping around a defenseless city feel. And I feel like having a multiplayer match on this map would lead to some really hype moments. Plus, there's a lot of vertical cover to hide from missiles, and we really need a few more maps with that feature. Another map that I think has a great sense of scale is this abandoned Faust facility, where you meet Kate Mark, I mean, where you fight all those invisible mechs that are there for some reason. The entry area to this map has two distinct areas, the sea out front, and then this series of highways on the inside that are pretty fun to explore and run around in and give you a little bit more of a sense of scale. I do think the sense of scale on this map is a little bit reversed, but it looks beautiful and I would love to fight some other players on it. 
the interior of this map is pretty ominous and foreboding as well, with a nice creepy vibe to it. I wouldn't mind getting trapped here while my team scores 0 points and the opponent team scores 3000 until I can finally be released by the sweet kiss of death. I know we already have two grid 86 maps in the game, but really look at the absolute spectacle of this. How do we not have a lower grid 86 map? Even this very intro area to grid 86 is completely fantastic and beautiful. It has that two-tiered map design I was talking about earlier with grid 135, and it has this really nice soft light that we don't really get on any of the other multiplayer maps. If the layout isn't nice enough, there's also the area just after you defeat Mad Stomp, which has a little bit more of a complex layout. But to me, the visuals matter a little bit more than the map layout, so I'm just hoping that From Software adds either of these areas to the multiplayer. And now, for the last one I want to mention in full, I'm sure you saw this one coming if you beat the game. Why can't we play in the abandoned city? I mean, this has got to be one of the coolest environments From Software has ever made in any title. And I think even if this were the only map available in multiplayer, I don't think I'd ever really get tired of playing on it. It's just that beautiful. It's really diverse, too. There's this bridge in the center of the map you can hide under, and this wide open area where you can have big brawls with this one MT that's out here. It really feels like it was built for multiplayer, so I hope that the only reason that it isn't in the multiplayer currently is just that they really didn't want to spoil it for players still playing through the story. At least that's my hope, because I really don't want to miss out on a world where we can play Armored Core 6 multiplayer on this beautiful map. Just a few honorable mentions now, because there are a couple maps left that I don't have a lot to say about, but they're quite pretty. Starting with the Dam Mission, where you just get yelled at by Michigan the whole time. The ice on this map is a really nice shade of green, and I would love to be able to play on this in multiplayer. Shoutouts to the Index Dunham Discord, you guys know who you are. There's also this underground room at the end of Act 4 that really reminds me of the original Armored Core games. And I would really like to see a multiplayer map somewhere down here, because I think it would really harken back to those old games and feel good for old-gen players. There's yet another really beautiful version of the Xylem I think we're missing towards the end of Act 5, which you can get to a few different ways. There's a lot of ways you could execute the layout for this map, but I really just care about the visuals. Um, there's not a lot of shaded or dark cities, and this is probably the close we're going to get in this game. Hopefully, in Armored Core 6-2, we can get a Night City map, because that would be really cool. And that brings me to my final honorable mention, which is a map I'm sure all the old-school Armored Core players will recognize. At the end of the Liberator Rubicon ending, you fight against Chatty and Carla in an arena that is nothing short of iconic. That is, of course, the arena. Why this map is left out of rotation, I can only assume, is to avoid spoilers. Um, and this is probably the biggest reason I think that From Software would ever even add additional multiplayer maps. The arena has been in a lot of different Armored Core games over the years, and I really hope we see it make a return to the multiplayer in Armored Core 6 Fires of Rubicon. So, there's my list of things that From Software can do to improve the multiplayer with relatively little effort. I hope that you enjoyed this video. And if you would share it with your friends, like, subscribe, leave a comment, all of those things will help it get more exposure. Here's hoping that From Software is aware of some of the stuff, and if they're not, hopefully this video starts the conversation. Thank you for watching, and I hope you have a good day getting rolled in PvP.